Hello everybody! In this video I'll tell you about the system memory, also known as RAM. How to load the total memory size installed in your computer, how to check the memory for errors, how to free up the system memory, what to do if Windows fails to see all of the system memory you have installed, what the paging file is and how it is connected with the system memory, and how you can benefit from memory compression in Windows 10. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. To find out how much RAM your computer has, go to Settings – System – About, or right-click on this PC, open Properties and have a look at the line Installed Memory – RAM. You can also see this information by going to this PC, clicking on the Computer tab in the upper left corner and selecting Properties, or by going to Control Panel – System. If your computer often shows you the blue screen arrows like this, it can be caused by system memory problems, so try checking it. There are many utilities for the job, but Windows 10, 8 and 7 have their own built-in tools to test the system memory. The testing will require a restart, so close all files which are open and exit all running applications before you start. Go to Control Panel – System and Security – Administrative Tools and run Windows Memory Diagnostic. As an alternative, you can use the keyboard shortcut Windows plus R, then enter mdschedexe and click OK. In the window that opens, click Restart now and check for problems to continue, or check for problems the next time I start my computer if you want to do it later. After restarting, the computer will switch to memory diagnostics automatically. This process can take some time. You can wait till the end of the standard test, or you can press the F1 button to change the scan options. On the Options page, you can change the scan mode to Basic, which runs the essential test selection, or go to Extended mode that encompasses all the tests available. You can navigate through the settings by pressing the Tab key. If you disable cache, the utility will be able to address RAM data directly, which ensures you run a comprehensive test. Besides, you can also set how many times the scanning will be repeated. Press F10 to apply the settings. It will send you to the main page and start the new scan. You can see the status while the scan is running, but as soon as the test is over, the computer will restart automatically. To see the scan results, you need to open the Event Viewer. You can do it by right-clicking on the Start menu and selecting it from the list. Then go to the folder Windows Logs – System and find the line saying Memory Diagnostics Result. Open it. If it says the Windows Memory Diagnostic tested the computer's memory and detected no errors, then your system memory is alright. If the results show one or several errors, you can try running an extended memory test and check the results again. If you still see at least one error, then one of your RAM models may be faulty and you might have to replace it. If the test doesn't show you which memory model has problems, you'll have to remove one of them and test each stick individually. If you notice that your computer has slowed down, it could be because it lacks the system memory. To see how much system memory is in use, go to the Task Manager. You can start it by right-clicking on the Start menu and selecting it from the list. Or by pressing the key sequence uh, Ctrl Shift Escape or Ctrl Alt Delete, depending on the version of your operating system. If you see there is not enough memory, you can try freeing up some more. The first thing you can do is to remove unnecessary programs from the startup list. To watch one of our videos for step by step instructions, find the link in the description. 
Every application that starts with the system eats up a share of the system memory, so it makes sense to remove all unnecessary items from the startup list. Such things may include various messengers, desktop clients, etc. To free up some memory when the computer is already working, have a look at the most memory-hungry programs. If you don't need them right now, disable it by clicking on it and choosing End task. However, we recommend that you close only the processes you know, because ending system tasks may affect your computer's performance. If you are not sure, right-click on the process and choose Search Online to learn more about a specific process. There are also chances that a process can be infested with a virus, which causes high memory usage. Watch one of our videos about removing viruses. You will find the link in the description as usual. By closing all unnecessary processes, you can free up some system memory. There are many special tools to free up the system memory automatically, for example, Memory Duct. It's quite simple. Just download it, run it, click on Clean Memory and confirm your decision by clicking OK. After cleaning, you will see a notice informing you on the results. Find the download link in the description as before. If you looked in the system properties to find out that Windows can't see all of the installed system memory, it can be caused by wrongly configured system or hardware problems. The first cause of the problem can be your operating system business. All 32-bit versions of Windows can't use more than 3.2 GB of RAM. Even if you haven't sold 8 or even 16 GB, the 32-bit operating system still uses a little over 3 GB because of this limitation. Some editions of the operating system can have such restrictions too. For example, Windows 7 Home Basic can use only 4 GB of RAM, so take this information into account when choosing your operating system. The second cause of the problem is the wrong configuration of the system when you make changes to maxim maximum memory settings. To find out if it's the case, go to Control Panel. Administrative Tools, System Configuration, Boot, Advanced Options, and uncheck the box next to Maximum Memory if it was checked before. The third cause of the problem is allocating system memory for the integrated graphics. If you have a discrete graphics card installed and you don't use the integrated graphics, go to BIOS to disable this function. You can watch how to enter BIOS in one of our videos. Find the link in the description below. In BIOS, you should find something like Share Memory Size or Video Memory Size or Internal Graphics Mode Select. Switch it off by selecting Disabled, None or a minimum possible memory size. In BIOS, you may also find certain limitations for the use of system memory which should be checked too. Look for settings like Memory Remap feature. It should be enabled. If you have the function HPET mode, it should be set to 64-bit, and Memory Hole setting should be disabled. The worst case is a hardware failure of the memory stick or the motherboard. In this case, they'll have to be replaced. When the system lacks random access memory, it will use the paging file. It's a hidden file on your hard disk where Windows moves some data to make more room in the system memory for the currently running applications. In our channel, there is a special video about configuring the paging file. You can watch it by following the link in the description. Windows 10 features a new function, Memory Compression, which was not available in older versions of this operating system. This function reduces the number of instances to address the paging file on the hard disk by compressing the data in the system memory instead of writing it to the hard disk, and this way improves the overall performance. This is how it works. If you have 8GB of RAM and the running applications use 9GB in that RAM, at least 1GB would have to be paged out and stored in the paging file on your computer's hard disk. Having to access the data in the paging file slows down certain applications and reduces the overall system performance. With the data compression, however, the size of data can be made smaller to fit into the RAM. You can see compressed memory details by opening the Task Manager, going to the tab Performance, choosing Memory, and below you will see how much memory is used and how much memory was compressed. Put your cursor on Memory Composition to see detailed information on how much memory is used and how much data is kept in the compressed memory. 
That is all for now. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.